relied upon for over 25 years by professional editors all over the world, Media Composer is the creative workhorse that basically helps you take on any type of job that walks through your door. And more and more often, those jobs are actually originating with 2K and 4K media. And a core part of our Avid Everywhere vision is to give you the freedom to work with what you want and the way you want. And this includes working with high-res media. Most vendors provide a point solution that only addresses a small part of the high-res challenge. And our goal is to provide you with a more holistic, platform-centric approach to your workflow that puts no limits on the resolutions that you capture, edit, and output. And that's what Avid Resolution Independence is all about, giving you the freedom of choice and unmatched flexibility to work the way that you want, from acquisition all the way through delivery, regardless of resolution. And resolution independence will actually permeate all of the Avid products on the Avid Media Central platform, but we're so excited that Media Composer is the first to adopt this. Now, yesterday we had the director, Robert Rodriguez, on our stage here talking about editing and his production company. It was really fantastic. He just released his new film, Sin City, A Dame to Kill For, and we're very happy that Robert has offered to let us use some of his footage to show some really great features that we are developing with Media Composer. So let's take a look. Now it's all a lot, of course, green screen work, a lot of special effects. Now he used the current shipping version of Media Composer. I will be showing some new features in a developing version. And the first thing I want to point out is when we go to launch the Media Composer project or in your project format settings, you can now work 2K, UHD, and 4K. Again, this is coming up in a developing build, not to mention 48P and 1080P60 as well. Now, once you create your projects, it's just a quick link to your media. We'll do an AMA link. AMA stands for Avid Media Access. And I'll sync to some DPX files. So at this point, I am now linking and playing back native full raster source media right in Media Composer. And again, this is playing back 2K. But there are times that you actually want to extract an area of interest. Again, we have the full 2K frame, but when you go in and do any sort of DVE or move, you tend to lose quality. Well, with FrameFlex, I can now go in and choose an area of interest by going in and selecting a smaller portion of the image. Let's go into her face. What that allows me is, again, a high quality extraction of the source material. I still have the full image that I can always do a pan and zoom on if I want. And it's also non-destructive because I do have the full raster of the image available to me at any time. But being able to work natively with high-res media is great, but it also places a huge burden on your storage and network infrastructure. So if you want to work alone, that means you are going to have to buy an awful lot of storage. But if you run a facility, the drain it puts on your bandwidth often means you'll have to sacrifice all of the benefits of working as a team on the same media. And it'll certainly make it difficult to access and edit the media from a remote location. Now, Avid helped solve a similar problem back when the industry was moving from standard definition to high definition. And that was DNX HD. Well, we've done it again with DNX HR, a high-res codec that scales from proxy quality images to visually lossless mastering quality for projects that let you edit and finish 2K, UHD, and 4K. You get amazing high-res footage quality without giving up bandwidth or storage space. When we talk about transcoding from your source, we can actually go in and choose how we want to transcode. We now have the new DNxHR formats from a low bandwidth proxy resolution all the way up to 444 for mastering. But transcoding is boring, right? You're waiting, you're watching a bar move. Well, we've actually changed that. Media Composer takes all of that into consideration and lets you transcode in the background because we want to make editing fun. So transcoding in the background will let me continue screening my shots or actually going back in and editing. 
then all the material, once it's transcoded, I can access at any time. Now, whether you choose to edit from beginning to end with your high-res source material, or whether you decide to transcode to DNxHR, eventually you need to master. You want to master back out. So this project, I'm going to master out to DPX. Because now within Media Composer, you will be able to actually not have to go to a third-party application to do any of this. It means all of the finishing and creative work will be done inside of Media Composer. You won't have to spend any valuable time recreating anything. Now, of course, it's not just feature films that are being finished in high res, but there are a growing number of television programs that are doing it as well. But even though ones that require a high res master, they also require an HD master. So let's move over to another program. I'm going to show you a scene from a very exciting new show called Black Sails. It's airing in the US on the Stars Network, and their production workflow takes them from Cape Town, South Africa, all the way to Los Angeles, California. Now, as common these days, the footage actually has been shot log C in order to take advantage of the full dynamic range of the image. So let's grab a couple of clips right here. We'll drop them into our bin. Now, this gives more flexibility in post as you can now apply 1D and 3D LUTs to your images right inside of Media Composer. Also, color decision lists. That's if the color decision list information is actually in the bin columns when the material is being imported. But what if the metadata is actually already in the color space and in the file that you're AMA linking to? You'll see in the color management settings, you can actually choose to have it read the color transformations automatically when linking to these files. So basically, all the work is practically done for you. Now, all of this metadata actually resides separately from the media and gives you the flexibility to make changes to your clips and sequences at any time in the editorial process. And in a collaborative production, you know that change is going to happen and needing to make them fast. For example, let's say that the DP on the shoot wants to craft a custom lookup table to be used in editorial. So I first want to point out that there are two scenes happening here. We have a chaotic scene happening on the upper deck and a darker scene in the lower deck. So let's jump out to Resolve and craft a new lookup table that I want to use for the below deck scene. So it's going to be a little darker, maybe add a little yellow hue to it. Maybe there's some sunlight coming through a dirty window. So at this point, we'll generate the lookup table. We'll go out to the desktop, and I'm going to call this Below Deck 5. Now I go back into Media Composer, go back to my source settings, and I can now at any point go back to the color settings, install the lookup table, and choose the Below Deck 5 lookup table that I just created. Now once it's installed, you simply can pull it down from your selection. Here's my Below Deck 5. Hit Apply, and the color has changed. Again, this is a non-destructive color effect, color encoding done on the clip. It's been applied to the source, and the great thing is that can be applied at any time. Any time that that lookup table is created, I can refresh my sequence to make any new changes that have been created, which is fantastic. Again, we're not disrupting the editing workflow. Now, once you make your color space adjustments to your source material, you can continue to actually edit with the high-res media, or you could transcode to a codec that performs better in editorial. And you saw how I was able to uh, transcode into DNX HR in the background, but now I want to show another utility called Dynamic Media Folders. A Dynamic Media Folder lets me go in and create a profile that lets you transcode, copy, and or consolidate also in the background. You're basically setting up a profile and adding media to your folder and have it perform all of these functions. So we'll bring up a park folder. We're going to park some media. And I have some clips right here. The profile is set up to acquire already. 
will take this clip and copy it into the copy folder. But what I've done in the profile has set it up that once it copies the file to the one folder, it's going to copy it to the next one and then complete my transcode. Once this is f uh, set up, any clips that you add to that are going to perform that same function. Basically, set it and forget it. It's all happening in the background, and Media Composer does not even have to be running at that time. Now, as you start building your sequences, you may tend to want to copy clips and segments into your timeline. And if we take a look at this part of the upper deck scene, let's say the director is coming in, and I have some really good ideas for some effects. But I don't want to destroy the sequence that I've created. Within the current version uh, copy of Media Composer, you can copy clips in your timeline. So now at this point, I can add effects. Let's just add a film grain to the top layer. And then the next layer, let's just do an extreme close-up. Again, just for demo purposes, just to show a couple of different effects. Now, the way Media Composer looks, you're looking from the top down for your effects. But now in Media Composer, you can mute clips. You don't have to delete them. If you want to preview anything, I simply mute that clip, and it's going to show me the effect below that. I mute that one, and it's going to show me the edit below that one. The nice thing is, is these clips become filler. When you render, it's only going to render what you see, but you can always go back to the clip and unmute to bring back the effect you were working on. And let's say you have an animatic or a storyboard going across your entire track. You can now disable tracks by simply selecting the little icon right here. When you disable a track, you still have the ability to do a time code reference or even a match back to that clip. Again, all of these features are in the current version of Media Composer. Now, we also have, as much as we place an emphasis on designing a timeline model that is fast but deep in how much control you have, we want to give you more control as an editor over your material. And with good reason, this is where you're going to be doing most of your work. And trimming is a huge part of that process. So let's go ahead and do trim mode. I'm going to do a bi-directional trim. You can actually choose multiple trim points, and I want to slide this back and forth. But when you're making your trim decisions, a lot of times you don't know where your handle lengths are. How much footage do you have? Now with the trim end indicator, you'll see that little mark is showing me that that edit is where I don't have enough footage. The trim end indicator. So the nice thing is I haven't broken my editorial stride. I can hunt down the track that I need to go in and make any sort of modification to. And I can trim accordingly. Now, as we know, audio editing is extremely important even to video editors. And in Media Composer, we have some really significant changes here as well. Pro Tools, our industry-leading audio workstation, recently added a 64-bit audio architecture called AAX. Avid Audio Extension. And now that same technology is built into Media Composer, not just giving you better compatibility between Media Composer and Pro Tools, but we give you 1,100 audio plugins. That's great. We've also talked a little bit of how crucial it is to be able to handle any kind of project that walks through your door. But what about on the flip side, you want to be able to have control over any type of project that's going to be leaving, any type of deliverable that you're working on. And a lot of times, that means multiple masters for different markets. For example, you need to deliver a sequence that has stereo 5.1 and surround environments. Well, in Media Composer, that's simple with a single step process. With the multiple audio mix down, a single tool lets me choose the bin where I want my mix downs to go. You can actually create templates. Here I have a dialog 5.1 and music stereo track that I've created. You choose the audio tracks and the outputs that you want to create. I have two stereo and one 7.1 surround track. And when I hit the mix, again, a single step process. It's now mixing all of those down into each output I selected and is going to place them into my bins for playout. So three different outputs created with one simple mix. And there it is. Again, a very simple process. 
So as you can see, you can definitely do much more than just edit and media composer. You have a lot of effects and sound mixing as well. It's all built in. And it's also great to see that Avid is forging ahead with tools that let you work in high resolution projects and stay that way. Now, even though I'm connected to a Mojo DX, I'm definitely playing out the full res you were seeing was HD. But if you have a third party piece of hardware, like let's say a Blackmagic Decklink card, you can output higher than HD. You will be able to with our developing build of software. And if you want to see a sample of that, definitely step around the stand to the Media Composer pod in the corner and actually see us playing out UHD. So at this point, let's just take a look at some more black sails. You know who that is, haven't they? The ship flies the banner of Captain Frank. The benefits of working with Media Composer definitely go way beyond the tools and features inside of the system. Whether you're an independent editor working at a home office, or an enterprise-wide production company, how and where you access your creative tools is extremely important. You need to have choices to actually make the best decisions for your business. At Avid, we give you the choice of freedom and of how you access Media Composer. First, you can choose the platform that you prefer to work on, whether it's PC or Mac. And the nice thing is, even if you have both platforms, it's easy to move back and forth between both. You can now purchase Media Composer on a month-to-month -month basis for $49.99 US a month. That allows you to actually add at your facility editorial seats as you need them. You can also buy a perpetual license outright. You can buy the software for the year with yearly support, which can be renewed each year, which includes software updates and AVID support. And if you're a large facility or educational institution, we offer a floating license model allowing you the ease and flexibility to dynamically allocate licenses as you need them, whether on-site or in the field.